Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining me today to talk about the energy consumption of the continuous deployment methodologies. So this is Al Hussein, a DevOps engineer working for Tetra Pak. Prior to joining Tetra Pak, I completed three master's degrees in pervasive computing and communications for sustainable development. So you can see the, the connection between the topic and, and the studies as well. Um, so just to start, to give some uh, context to this talk. So according to um, Intel, the 50, more than 50% of the energy um, or of the greenhouse gas emissions coming from the inefficiencies in infrastructure and software. Um, and that's, you know, that sounds alarming. Um, so that's why we need to start uh, more focusing on, uh, on testing, on measuring our um, infrastructure uh, power consumption in order to make some improvements. So just an overview about uh, the deployment tools that are being used for this experiment or the study. Um, first is the traditional uh, continuous deployment tool. As an example here, it's the GitHub Actions. Uh, basically, it's a CI-CD platform for building, testing, and also deploying um, software. Um, to run those uh, pipelines, we need something called runners, basically just the machines where those tasks are executed. Currently, running those tasks are not supported on a container. However, with the, uh, with the uh, Actions Runner controller, which is an open source, it makes it possible to do so. And the other methodology which is the GitOps, and as an example of a GitOps tool is Argo CD. It's, um, it's a Kubernetes uh, controller um, to deploy uh, applications to Kubernetes declaratively. And it's also part of the Argo family. Um, before talking about the experimental conditions and uh, the test bed setup, um, first, why, why Kepler? Well, there are, there are many tools or some tools to measure the energy consumption of the underlying infrastructure. However, they do not provide direct um, measurements for the workloads running on Kubernetes, except Kepler, which is the reason why I have chosen it, and it also logs metrics at the pod or container level. Um, Kepler uses eBPF, Extended Berkeley Packet Filter, to uh, reduce the uh, runtime overhead, um, uh, programs to uh, to probe, um, yeah, the system stats and uh, export the results or the energy-related data as uh, Prometheus metrics. And regarding the testbed setup, um, so the, it is consists of um, a machine running Ubuntu 20, 20, uh, 2204 on which a Minikube cluster is created. Um, the components used for the experiments are Kube Prometheus um, to just get both uh, Prometheus and Grafana for monitoring and visualizations, and of course, Kepler, um, Argo CD, and the uh, Actions Runner controller as the two continuous deployment tools. In order to ensure the consistency, I use the same sample application that will be deployed by both of the tools, and also run the experiments multiple times using a script to ensure that um, the, the pattern remains consistent throughout the experiments. So the experimental conditions, um, here we can see that the developer commits a change to, um, to Git, and then that triggers the deployment using um, both of the tools, and they deploy the same applications but to two different namespaces um, just to manage them separately while keeping that workload is consistent. Um, next, we can see that um, the results are here. Uh, so for the GitOps with Argo CD, we can see that it, uh, it starts around 0 0.1 Watt in the beginning, which is the idle state for both of the tools before deploying any application, just to ensure that the starting point is um, it, it is, is in a good state, and then there's a spike when, it de when the application gets deployed after about 12 minutes, which is um, the 
the time between the actions, so the first is deploying the applications, then make a ruling update, followed by a rollback, and in the end of the hour, approximately, um, we get the applications deleted. Um, after about 10 minutes, uh, it increases to about, um, yeah, it averages around 0.35 for the rest of the, for the rest of the hour, and this can be attributed to the applications, uh, the application control of Argus CD, which uh, basically is, um, is the one that consumes most of the energy here, as we can see. As for the uh, Argus CD repo server, the, uh, there are spikes whenever there is a, a change in Git repository, as it's, it pulls that um, every um, some time. Um, well, we can notice for the, uh, for the uh, GitHub actions, that it has uh, maybe lower consumption when it's in an idle state where there is no um, activity, but we can clearly see that the um, the energy consumption is higher when there is an up, when there is an activity like deploying the applications or um, upgrading or even when deleting the application. Um, it could be even almost as twice as um, for Argo CD. Additionally, I have explored um, the two of the common ar architectures for Argo CD, which are the standalone and Hapan spoke. So for the standalone is deploying the application to the same cluster, which is Minikube, where Argo CD is installed, while for the Hapan spoke is deploying um, the same application, but to multiple clusters, uh, two IKS clusters for this experiment, plus the Minikube cluster. And here I leveraged the application set that allows to deploy the same applications to multiple cluster concurrently. Yeah, so the difference here, we can see that uh, it's almost as twice as, uh, when it comes to energy consumption, it's almost as twice as for the uh, for the for happen and spoke, it's twice as compared to the standalone, and this is uh, natural because we have more clusters to manage. Then uh, the energy increases, however, not like linearly. And just for a closing remar remarks, that it's important to uh, measure the energy consumptions of our applications, um, and also choosing the tool that is designed for the purpose that we are intended to use it. Um, and also, um, it would be great if more folks jo will join the uh, Green Reviews working group of the uh, CNCF Environmental Sustainability Tag. And that's about it, folks. Uh, your feedback is highly appreciated. Thank you.